Hello and welcome to this episode of Leadership Guest Practices with me, Jeremy Blaine, CEO of PerformanceWorks International. Transformation is everywhere and at the heart of this, executive leaders need to evolve the culture of the organisation for modern times. It's a strong foundation to mobilise, persuade, engage and motivate management, teams, customers and other stakeholders behind the journey. And it should be owned by human capital leaders everywhere. And it's especially important as we integrate new business models like hybrid, distributed and flexible working, and when we consider the increasingly blended workforce. Your permanent employees working side by side with highly valued independent workers as the new human capital pool. In fact, that pool could be a 50-50 split in your organisation in workforce terms within the next few years. My two guests, Andrea Burns and Richard Davis, are passionate about building culture for modern times and have just published their first book on the topic, Good Culture, Align Your People, Profits and Purpose for the Greater Good. They argue that your culture is why people buy from you, supply, invest, join, perform and stay. They regard everybody in the organisation as a leader and explain the nine steps to create that culture based on the right values, risk and people profile using Nobel Prize nominated Dr. Robert S. Hartman's work in value science and Maslow's hierarchy of needs and self-actualization. Let's hear more. Hello and welcome to this episode of Leadership Guest Practices all about good culture and our guest today will be sharing a link for an online culture scorecard. Nine questions in 60 seconds and you'll get a personalized report about your risk level of your culture. So stay tuned. So thank you for joining me, Andrea and Richard. I'm going to come to you first, Andrea. Please introduce yourself, your expertise and your passion. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Um, My field is all about leadership, productivity and organisational culture. My background was leading teams and business development across the IT, training and engineering sectors. And for the past 10 years, I've successfully used the broad axiometrics tool set to define, measure and develop organisational culture and people performance. I put a lot of that work into our book. I do my best thinking whilst I'm walking my dog Tilly in the countryside and at weekends um, I can often be seen galloping, hopefully in control in competitions on my horse babs, but anything's possible. I've seen pictures of you on your horse, Bab. So using that as a theme, let's gallop into the uh, first question for you, Andrea. I thank you very much. I'm here all week. Andrea, please, could you give us a definition of good culture and why it's important? Okay, of course. Thank you. Um, When we think about culture, we think about a standard set of behaviours plus the underlying mindsets that shape how people work and interact day to day. So why is culture important? Well, Recently in a McKinsey study, the data was compelling. Companies with healthy cultures have three times greater total returns to shareholders. So to those who focus on bottom line, culture is good for business. But we're more interested in the triple bottom line, people, profit and planet. A good culture is good for the health of its employees, but also I think we're all aware of the need for organisations to take care of the planet as well. Oh, I'd agree. And very much at the centre of purpose driven businesses, of course. So why would you say now particularly is a good time to launch a book about culture? Well, the world shifted and organisations need to shift their culture to stay relevant. Many people contemplated their life during lockdowns. And as a result, more people want to make an impact beyond profit. We see a growing rejection of the nine to five workday and the grinding daily commute. I was never a fan, could you tell? (laughs) So the expectations of working life have changed. Companies need to remain attractive and relevant and establish work cultures to meet the needs of tomorrow's workforce and their broader stakeholders. That's why now is a good time to launch a book on culture. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, particularly with the shifts in the work force the workplace the modes of working all of these kind of things so perhaps a great time for me to bring uh, back Richard into the point here uh, and Richard this is your your second appearance on these leadership guest practices so welcome back uh, please reintroduce yourself uh, for those tuning in and tell us a little bit more about you thanks Jeremy so my consulting field is also leadership productivity and culture 
And in the past couple of years, I've also helped to build a supportive learning community called Effective Entrepreneurs. So my background, well, it was in commercial corporate roles at Kellogg's and then at Shell, uh, where my last role, I was responsible for the training and development of half a million people. Uh, whereas now, my time, uh, spare time revolves around my two teenage sons, a dog and two pet pigs. So horses, pigs and dogs so far, there's a theme coming through on you two here. And uh, and also from your time point of view, I can imagine when you were dealing with half a million people training them, you didn't have any time for yourself. So no wonder you're kind of immersing yourself in that now. So coming to you then, Richard, where do organisations and leaders go wrong in creating good culture? Thanks, Jeremy. Well, you remember the, the management expert, the late great Peter Drucker, well, he's reported to have said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, I totally subscribe to that. And so here I have uh, three areas where leaders go wrong when it comes to culture. So in a number one, I think they just let it fall into the too difficult box. Uh, leaders are often a bit intimidated or a bit world and just unsure how to actually tackle culture because they find it to be a bit too intangible. Um, number two, so what do they do instead? Well, they focus on the duo of strategy and delivery. God, the number of times I've heard that. Strategy, delivery. They then become frustrated when implementation is patchy. Well, that's because they've skipped the part where they need to build the culture that actually supports the performance. And the third uh, way they go wrong is they rely on behavioural-based change programmes. Um, and they're not actively doing things to build an environment that embraces thinking diversity. Yeah, I understand that. And diversity of thinking across all businesses is needed now. And going back to actually your first point, culture eat strategy for breakfast. Very interesting. I was at a talk where I heard somebody spin that around and say in this modern era of change and transformation, those organizations with really good cultures are really suffering because strategy has become so poor, particularly strategy implementation. So strategy is starting to eat culture for breakfast. Not sure you'd subscribe to that maybe, Richard, I don't, I, I don't know. But um, it's very much at the heart of this discussion about what good culture looks like. So coming back to you, Andrea, good culture, your book, Good Culture, Align Your People, Profits and Purpose for the Greater Good is action orientated. And I love that because it's all about how to do these days. In fact, you and Richard provide a nine step blueprint to create a good culture based on the right values, the risks and people. And this is the bit that really resonated for me. So please tell us more about the work and the experts that have informed it. Thanks very much indeed. OK, so what is the expression about standing on the shoulders of giants? Our book is built upon the work of Abraham Maslow and his lesser known but equally brilliant colleague, Dr. Robert S. Hartman. Maslow gave us the hierarchy of needs in his famous pyramid with five levels from physiolo uh, physiological needs at the bottom to self-actualization at the top. Hartman gave us the tools to climb up the pyramid. He also inspired Maslow to extend the pyramid to eight levels with the top level being transcendence, which is helping others to self-actualize. Now back to the book, the nine core chapters are based on Hartman's nine performance pathways, which we're excited to share with you. I'm gonna um, put you on the spot here on that one because that is the bit that really feels like the secret source. So can you take us through those nine steps now, Andrea? Yes, of course. Um, I'm going to read this out uh, and just the headings to start with, and then we're going to look at each one in a little bit more detail. So the first one is building trust in the common bond. Second is building team synergy. Third, setting vision, mission and purpose. Fourth is instilling responsibility and integrity. Fifth, focusing on results. Sixth, developing strategies and discipline. Seventh, fostering innovation and change. Eighth, preparation and tactics. And then the ninth is maintaining consistency and conformity. These are the nine steps and the order is important as we will explain shortly. Okay, so let's start with the first step, building trust and the common bond. Trust is the foundation for everything. It is such an important step, but leaders tend to take it for granted and rush to build visions and missions and then demand delivery. Think about it. If people don't trust each other, will they work well together? Without trust, will they ever buy into the company's vision and mission? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And 
the times that we're living in and the speed of change require a great deal of trust across all of our people in organizations. So it's a very, very important foundation stone, always has been, but you could argue even more important now for leaders to get hold of. So let me bring Richard back in to talk about the second step, please. Thanks, Jeremy. So step two is team synergy. So synergy occurs when team members start to work together as one. They each contribute their diverse perspectives. They help one another to be more effective and they recognize the contributions and success of each person to build individual and team strength. So we provide a team synergy building tools in the book in its dedicated chapter. And you know what, you, you just can't, going back to trust, you just can't achieve team synergy unless you have trust in place. Uh, so that was why trust was the first step. Yeah, and I, I understand that as well. You start you start trying to do things without trust and it, it, you're just kind of like banging your head against a brick wall, aren't you? So thanks for that, Richard. So let me bring Andrea back in to tell us about steps three and four. Okay then, so the third step is setting vision, mission and purpose. As a leader, you must guide your organisation to create these three distinct elements, vision, mission and purpose. What we do is we provide a clear definition of these three terms and explain how to craft them in the book. Many organisations jump straight to the vision and mission without having first worked at building trust and team synergy. So now let's move on to step four, which is instilling responsibility and integrity. Leaders must create an environment where everyone feels responsible and accountable for their choices with a clear understanding of their roles. When there is widespread responsibility and integrity, there is less blame, less conflict, better customer service, higher productivity and higher quality. We provide tools to help you instill responsibility and integrity in the book. That's a very important point. And if that integrity and responsibility is across all levels, then things can really improve. I'm sure we can all recall customer service experiences where there's been zero ownership. Uh, not my fault, governor, um, other departments fault, all of these kind of things. We need a level not just of responsibility, but of accountability. So I really subscribe to those as well. Richard, maybe you could take us through steps five and six. Sure. So step five is focusing on results. Now, I've worked for bosses who focus on results to the exclusion of everything else. Right. So I tell you, it's not great. First, you need to build the foundations that we've outlined in steps one to four. So I'm hoping that the logic of working on steps and sequences started to, to come across. So now we move on to step six. Well, that's developing strategies and discipline. And this is all about the ability to develop successful strategies and strong personal discipline. That's the key that's required to identify potential obstacles and blockers and then develop solutions to overcome them. It's, the about, it's about the ability to track and measure the success and failure of decisions. Because, you know, as we said at the beginning, we're living in a world that's just rife with volatility uncertainty, complexity, and, and all the other words, ambiguity. So as a leader, and uh, you're responsible for, for many of the decisions that define how your organization operates. So that means agile thinking is now more necessary than ever before. So best practice was really yesterday, and now it's all about best thinking. That's what's in demand today and tomorrow. So we help you with that. And, um, and in, in this chapter we have there, I particularly like barrier thinking, uh, which we write about. It's a tool that, that I've worked with in the past and it works really well. Yeah, some important points there and interesting about the, the drive for results and looking at results at the exclusion of all else that you mentioned there. Is there's many organizations that are moving to a model of performance support versus performance management right now and catching people doing it right in other ways, the behaviors, uh, the attributes that they want to go systematically through the, uh, the organization. And I think those kind of things can really help build from the bottom up from a good culture point of view. So the picture is really building for me now based on what you're telling me. And I hope that everybody who's tuning in can start to understand how this book is giving us a blueprint for building a good culture. So perhaps, Andrea, you could take us through the last three steps. Yes, of course. So we're now onto the home straight. So let's dive into step seven, fostering innovation and change. This is all about creating a culture that encourages, supports and rewards innovation and evolution. It encourages trial and error and also learning. 
Change is joined at the hip with innovation, and this chapter has provided several tools to help you lead and manage change and innovation as a leader and in teams. So for chapter eight, preparation and tactics, this step is about personal competence and confidence in making decisions. It has to do with the ability of the individual or the organization to solve problems efficiently and effectively. Preparation is the process of planning. Tactics are the action steps required. When you feel prepared and ready, you are confident in your plan and your stress levels are lower. Of course, no plan is perfect. However, adjusting the course within a plan is far easier than having to begin again from the start when under pressure. So drum roll, please. We've arrived at platform nine, maintaining consistency and conformity. This is all about respect for authority, rules, co codes and property and about establishing goals for short and long term. A good culture is not a destination. It's a state of being, and there needs to be consistency and conformity to build and maintain a good culture. People need to do the right things in the right way every single day. As per all the chapters, we've included a lot of tools to help you on your journey. Wow, I, I, I love that. Good culture is not a destination, it's a state of being. Totally get that. And it, what you did, the, how you wrap that up there, resonates for some of the things that I'm talking about at the moment, as far as the leadership and organizational questions, which have shifted from what we need to do to how to implement what we need and embed the change culturally within the organization. And this is really the how to, to get it done, to build that good culture. It's a lot to take on board, but because you've broken it down into those nine steps, I believe that's a systematic approach that people can take. And as you say, it's important to start at that step one, that building of trust. So Richard, last question for you then. So what are some of the tips that you can provide to help organizations and executive leaders fast track progress, including how they include and involve the rest of the organization as leaders at all levels to be part of the journey from day one? Thanks, Jimmy. Well, tip one, would it be too cheeky to say, uh, buy our book, uh, read it, and then buy copies for your colleagues? Um, because there's quite a lot we've been through, and it is how to. And if you take, you know, in each chapter, there's also a section of who you need to be. So you've got, you've, you've got not only the, the what, but you've got the, the who and the how in each one. Uh, and we are completely subscribed to believing of leaders at all levels. Uh, and and uh, you don't need to be a CEO to buy and apply this. Uh, you can start to make uh, towards building a culture, even if you're a very small team. Um, so the Kindle version comes out later in May uh, this month and uh, printed books in June. So if you just visit Amazon, type in the name of a book, Good Culture, align your people, profits and purpose for the greater good, you'll be able to find it there. So that's kind of a, the first tip. Um, the second one, just uh, as Jeremy said at the top, uh, take our online uh, culture scorecard. Uh, 60 seconds so you know if you're watching this on, on a tablet or laptop you know um, I mean what we can do is we'll we'll put on screen probably afterwards a, a QR code so you can just look at it and do that or, or we'll um, put the uh, website URL on in case you're listening of course that's the usual HTTPS uh, uh, double slash uh, and it's just good hyphen culture dot score app or one word uh, dot com um, and that will take you there. Um, and then after that, if you want to dive a bit deeper, because uh, you can do the second scorecard, which is 27 questions, and that's going to help you understand the drivers of your culture. And you'll get more in-depth, personalized report. It comes to you on email via, uh, you know, just with, with a PDF report. Now, that's one you could get a bunch of colleagues together and you could do all of that and do the deeper one. And that will help you start a conversation with colleagues around culture. Um, so um, definitely recommend that. Tip three, well, if you really want to get deeper and understand how you think and make decisions, then I recommend that you take our online thinking exercise, which only takes 15 minutes. Uh, and that'll generate a, an axiometrics report for you. Uh, this is, you know, it's, it's driven by a mega powerful algorithm and there's like 6.4 quadrillion, you know, potential outcomes. Uh, again, um, it, you know, you, there'll be a QR code somewhere that you can uh, point at it and it'll take you to our website, uh, which is for those listening, www.catapult-solutions.co.uk 
and just go to the top, select shop uh, from the top menu. Um, and you can browse and choose from any one of 16 different reports that we have available. So Jeremy, that's it for our top tips and next steps. Wow, Richard, that is a, quite a toolkit that you're giving everybody here. And to everybody tuning in, please do take advantage of this. Give them a bit of a road test, access these links or QR codes that you can see on the screen. Andrea, Richard, good luck with good culture. Align your people, profits and purpose for the greater good out now. You can get it on Amazon. We'll make sure the links are there for everybody that is tuning in and the people that tune in subsequently too. Thank you very much to both of you for joining me. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for joining our guest practices video cast. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel through the link below or check out our website to access more in our current series of expert interviews.